Hello everyone, I am the uh, lead singer, guitarist, bassist, drummer, songwriter. I guess you could just say that this is a solo project. So technically I am the Fence Sitters. Um, here is the third track off my EP, Econodum. I still don't know how to actually say it because I never actually figured out how. Um... This is track three, Forbidden Confessions, and this one uh, seems to be the most popular song. And I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be cool if I uploaded a video on the first year anniversary of this EP's release? Um, kind of just breaking down the song's production and uh, what methods I used to record it at the time. Uh, and yeah, so I just thought I would you know, just run through my very messy track layout uh, and kind of give you guys a rundown of how I made Forbidden Confessions. Uh, first of all, lyrics-wise, I kind of just vented into my notes app uh, and took that whole vent and tried to... like It was more like a rhythmic vent, kind of like a poem, poetic vent, I guess. So... I tried to kind of take that vent and I tried to kind of extract lyrics from it. And that's what Forbidden Confessions is uh, in terms of the lyric quality. And, you know, I still think it's probably my best song lyrically because it's just probably the most personal or emotionally honest song on this whole EP. Uh, and, you know, people seem to like it. It's actually kind of weird because... You know, it seems to be a mixed bag, but majority of the people that listen to it like it. And if they like it, they really like it. If they don't, they just think it's like mid. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Uh, so I suppose we should just start. First things first, we have four guitar layers on the center channel. We have this like kind of bassier softer sort of crunchy tone uh, it's called amp switcher in logic i use this a lot for my demos because it usually just makes any clean sound sound that much better um so for here it's just playing a little arpeggio thing on the guitar uh, starting out on the low E string, you guys don't need to know how I played the song. I'll probably make a video about that some other time. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's just playing this rhythm. And meanwhile, uh, no, it's actually three guitar tracks. There's uh, two pan left and right. They're both playing pretty similar things, except they're timing is kind of changed and uh the right guitar introduces a low bass note in which the left guitar doesn't have so all together it just sounds like this and that's just using sweet boutique because i found that that is the guitar tone that simulated early car seat headrest the best uh in terms of the distortion now as for the bass apparently i played a bass note at the beginning here uh that in tandem goes along with the rhythm and makes it sound i guess just more full huh well learn something new i guess uh, now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the song, the verse, first verse. Uh, all it is really is the same intro, you know, chord for the first half. In fact, it's actually probably just copied and pasted directly. Uh, no, it isn't. No, it might be. I don't, <laughs> I can't really tell. But then it goes into... which the uh, the amp switcher channel, the mono panned guitar here, is just playing chords. And I think I have a spring reverb on it because, you know, that emulates that old 
early car seat headrest sound and it's just it sounds nice on pretty much anything you throw on it um as for the left and right panned guitars we have a little lead plucked thing and you know all together it sounds beautiful in my opinion i think it sounds great Uh, as for the bass, it is merely just playing, you know, the root notes, occasionally going up or down a couple steps. You know, the bass ain't playing anything particularly complicated there <laughs> at all. Uh, then we have a rock organ, which is, you know, obviously reminiscent of early car seat headrests, which is definitely a very big thing I was going for on this EP. Uh, cause I thought that I found like it was a lot easier to pr produce this way and it definitely was a lot easier to produce this way. And I still think that it sounds pretty accurate. You could throw it on any car seat headrest album and you'd just be like, okay, that's a car seat headrest song. Uh, but the rock organ is just playing simple notes, root notes that follow the, uh, uh, melody. Nothing too special. I mean, you can't really hear it in the full song. Maybe a little bit. I don't know. The biggest part where it comes in is at the end, which I will get to. But right now we're focusing on the verses. Uh, let's talk about drums. Drums were kind of a complicated one because I found that if I just recorded my actual drum kit playing just regularly, that it would, you know, sort of drown out because I had, I recorded this whole thing with my MacBook microphone, like the one built into the laptop, uh, and, you know, playing any instrument or like any consistent noise after a while it just starts to drown out the noise and you can probably hear that i'd say best in the symbols of reasonable intro um during that breakdown part because they start off strong and just weaken out after that but if we just look at this right now all pretty much all the drums on this ep were tracked with the kick snare track and a cymbal track. Uh, but some songs I did a little bit differently, like this one where there's a hi-hat track through the whole thing, where, you know, I had the hi-hat track separate from the cymbal track. So let's just look at it here. I think this is the regular kick and snare track, but I doubled it up with another amp simulator just to make it sound a little bit more cleaner and just more full, I guess. Um, as you can hear, there's clicking from the stick. That's me hitting on the bass drum rim to try and track my timing because uh, I can't play the cymbals as it's just going to drown out the rest of the sound. So yeah, it's just playing that. Nothing too particularly complicated. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, so separate drum tracks. We have the cymbal or the crash and ride, which I didn't realize <laughs> that I really fucked up that recording there. But yeah, you can hear how it starts washing out after the shitty noise reduction on the MacBook. <laughs> it just kind of lets it dwell away and you know, like right here. It sounds so much worse. I think this is open hi-hat. Yeah. These drums are really like chopped up. Uh, they aren't really like actually play live. Uh, they are, but like they're kind of split up in certain ways where it sounds like a live take, but it's not really. 
it's more just separate layers. And then of course we have the hi-hats, which I think plays throughout the whole thing. Uh, it just adds it even when you're uh, not playing the hi-hat like here. So it just makes it sound a little bit nicer, I think, personally. Now vocals. Vocals uh, weren't that difficult. Uh, I recorded them in my car as particular car seat headrest fashion, but also because I didn't want my family hearing me sing the vocals to the song for kind of obvious reasons. Um, so we have two vocal tracks. They, I believe, are just an amp simulator with a chorus put on them. Uh, I'll actually just listen so I can figure it out. No. I actually, I thought I put a chorus on them, but that might just, that might be the backing, yeah, backing vocals of a chorus, that's why. So I have the two lead vocals, it's just double tracked vocals with the same melody and lyrics and all that, uh, but they're panned slightly left and slightly right. Kind of giving it like a slight chorusy effect, but not quite. Uh, so yeah, so that's the lead vocals, of course. Uh, they are very much recorded in a car, and you can tell just by the fact that there's no <laughs> reverb at all. Nice. Well, there's added reverb, but we're not going to count that. Uh, and then, of course, we have backing vocals, which is just a harmony, higher harmony. I really struggled with recording these backing vocals. I'm going to say that. Uh, but all in all, recording vocals for the song didn't take that long. Uh, and I guess it shows because I kind of just settled with as long as I get through the take, it's done. Instead of this take isn't good enough. Let me redo that. Uh, which I feel like if I hadn't rushed to get this EP done, because by like the last week of RPM, which is what I made this EP for, I realized oh, fuck, I haven't recorded anything. <laughs> so I was just scrambling to get something out and done. And, you know, at this point, most of the album was done except for some, or not album, most of the EP was done except for some vocals, uh, which I definitely did last minute. Uh, I think Forbidden Confessions was the quickest of the bunch because I think I recorded structured... Well, no, I structured the original demo a while ago, but I recorded everything like the night before, uh, like on the 27th. Uh, and then on the 28th, I did my vocals. And then after I did my vocals, I finished mixing with big quotations and posted it to Bandcamp. So this one was recorded at the very last minute of RPM. Like it was surprising how well it turned out. I was very proud. Uh, yeah. So anyway, backing vocals. It's actually lower here. So I left some empty space here for uh. Just more impact in the vocals, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't forget to record the lines. <laughs> but, like, if you listen here. Yeah, I at this point, I really sucked at recording backing vocals, <laughs> like, a lot. Uh, so they sound kind of off, of course, but that's not a huge problem i don't think uh, and then we have the ooze the uh you know just the stereo panned high reverb uh i have them going out to an auxiliary channel with a reverb a chorus apparently was initially added i don't remember doing that uh but anyway it's just Faces. 
So that's basically it for the vocals. There isn't really anything particularly interesting. Uh, aside from the chorus on this backing vocal. Uh, yeah, so I suppose we should get to the chorus. Yet again, nothing really particularly unique is added to the chorus. It's much the same recorded as the verses, uh, except there's another guitar track, this time on like an actual crunch tone. And all of this together sounds really full and powerful. Oh, and of course there's the crash cymbal uh, track, which is going to demonstrate the Logic Pro, or not Logic Pro, MacBook noise reduction technology. If you just listen. Because my drum set is too loud for the MacBook mic to handle, and it just starts distorting. <laughs> actually isn't cutting out as much as I thought it was going to. But anyway, it's just me hitting the crash cymbal, and then of course we have just the regular drums. You know, it's not particularly special. Nothing really to dissect there that we haven't gone over in the verses. Second verse starts out, same rhythm, except instead of starting out immediately with words, it starts out with the ooze. Now, because we already went over how the verse, first verse goes, it's going to be identical for the second verse. Same thing with the chorus. Uh, and then we have the ending to the second chorus. Which then transitions into the Radio Days Amp Simulator, which is supposed to simulate the sound of a radio. And, you know, there's a lot of mids. There isn't too much lows or highs. It sounds really pretty, I think. Or it sounds really nice. Uh, it's a really nice tone shift from the hard rocking guitars to just clean, you know, maybe slightly distorted just because radios are like that. Um, yeah. So then we have the vocals, which I believe are literally just... The same thing, but with a lot more reverb and a delay. Uh, and yeah. Never gonna come. That part was totally unintentional, by the way. I just, for <laughs> I lost my cue to sing. I forgot where, when I was supposed to start singing and I just went, um, oh, and then uh, I listened back and I was like, huh, that sounds kind of cool. What if I just leave it like that? Uh, and it gives me goosebumps. So, well, it doesn't really anymore. But when I first listened to it after mixing, I think it probably did. Uh, the vocal on the right channel doesn't have a tape delay, but it has more reverb. Uh which I thought they both had tape delay, but I guess I was wrong. Uh, this is also interesting for me because I haven't really opened these project files ever since I dropped the songs. So I, <laughs> there's just surprises everywhere in here. Uh, and then, of course, we have the amp switcher um, playing along the Radio Days amp sim. You know, doing the exact same thing. And then we have the organ coming in. The organ just makes it sound more full. You know, of course, it's not really playing anything. It's just playing the root notes, I think. Oh, there's an octave there. I never knew that. So after a little bit, the lower octave comes in. Uh, 
these two are playing the exact same thing. <clears throat> this is just going by... I think the chorus melody is what I base this off of, uh, because, you know, never gonna come out. And it's going, come out, you know, on the, uh, each time it goes up and down. Yeah. It's doing the last two notes to the chorus, uh, or not the last two notes to the whole chorus, but like the, uh, this part. It's just alternating between those two often. Uh, so with the rock organ, the radio days, and the amp switcher, uh, you know, playing the same thing roughly, we have the distorted guitars, except they aren't really playing anything. Uh, they're more just kind of... Oh, these are. These are playing the same thing as amp switcher. Okay, that makes sense. So, Amp Switcher, the Sweet Boutique, and the Radio Days Amp Simulators are all playing the same thing, giving it a nice full, wide uh, depth, full sound, I guess you could say, depthful. I don't think that's a word, uh, but it is now. And then, of course, that's playing along with the bass, which is just playing root notes. You know, this song is a lot simpler than it sounds. It's just a lot of amps. <laughs> and of course, with the vocals, sounds great. Oh, I never needed that one. Oh, you can hear there's definitely something missing. Now, what is that thing? It's two more guitars, pan left and right. Uh, it's the same thing as the real crunch tone from the chorus, except instead of them playing like rhythm, they are just doing a sweep down the strings, and it sounds beautiful once it's all together. Just realize you can't really shoot the bass. It's probably to do with how the strings on my guitar are actually tuned down. Because uh, what it is, is capo on third fret, and the. Or actually, no. It's just if you tune without the capo, the low E is tuned down to drop C. Uh, but then you put the capo on third fret, and that's the tuning for the song. I'm just playing a C chord, except screwing around with my finger placements. Uh, I, I'll go over how to play it eventually, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so it just sounds really full with the sweeps. And then it gradually builds up, uh, I think. I feel like the drums are a really big player in making it build up. Yeah. There's also another guitar pan to the center, I think. I actually don't know what this is or if it's drums. Uh, so we're going to find out together. Okay, yeah, it's drums. It's just high-end, added high-end for the drums so that they punch through, I guess, in the muddy mess of this song's mix. Um, So we have... All the drums here, it's just, you know, pretty simple. Just all the drums playing eighth notes, I believe. Yeah, eighth notes. Gradually getting more intense hitting till the, the climax of the buildup. The resolution or the falling action and then you have the resolution so thank you for tuning in this is the fence sitters 
Hope you really enjoyed this video if you watched it all the way through. I apologize if there was some lag. <laughs> uh, personally, I can't do anything about that because my laptop is definitely not powerful enough to track Logic Pro and OBS at the same time. <laughs> But I hope it didn't look too bad. I mean, it's only just, it's mostly music production. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. This is me. I'm going to leave. Uh, and yeah, so goodbye.